to know your point of view. I look at the thumbnail on this video and it kind of breaks my heart because that day, I, I know exactly when that day was, and this was at a real pivotal time in my life. Uh, I had had the heart attack at this point, and my husband had left me. He had, he, he had, we were separated. We hadn't yet filed for divorce. In fact, he was kind of stringing me along at this point, leading me, having me think that we were going to try and work things out. And, uh, but this is the first Christmas that I spend away from my family. First, I so I will never spend Christmas with my family again. It's the first one that I don't spend Christmas with my family. And I never, I never will go back again. I don't believe that at all on this Christmas. I don't believe at all that that's going to be it, that I'll never go back to spending Christmas with them again. Not, not at all. I, I could not have predicted anything that was going to happen that day. And... If I had it to do all over again, I would just do just about every single thing differently. I believe people love me that didn't love me. I believe narcissists and a sociopath loved my children and had their best interest at heart. I believe we were safer around them than we were. We were not safe at all around them. In this picture, as you see, these children, they're protected. They have, uh, they have they, their life hasn't turned into chaos yet. They're still with me. They're, that's going to change. That baby there, that's my nephew. He will not really ever know me. My niece, her relationship with me, we were very close at this point. At the, that When she was a little girl like that, we were very close. She was also very close with my sons. And that's going to change. You know, she's going to stop knowing knowing me. If I could have done anything differently, I would have I would have just gotten out of that marriage. At this point, I've already stayed way too long even. I've already stayed way too long because... I had a heart attack. That heart attack should have been enough. That should have been a red flag for me to get out right there. But what you can see when I look back on it is I can see just the layers of neglect and the layers of abuse and how it has not stopped. You know, I almost died. I did die, in fact. I had a near-death experience. And the reaction, the underreaction was so clear that the message was so obvious that it didn't seem that anyone cared if I had died. Well, that same is clearly there with my son too. It, it was just so hard for me to understand, for me to, for me to fully grasp the cruelty, the sadistic cruelty of a family and what they were going to do to me and to those innocent children, the two little boys on either end of that, of that thing. What they're going to do is they're going to gang up on me, they're going to try and get between me, me and my children, they're going to make life really, really hard for me, they're going to gossip about me in front of my children, they're going to give my husband permission to do whatever he wants to do to, to me, and, and they're going to give each other permission to do whatever they want to do to me as well, as far as stealing my property, stealing my assets. They basically will treat me like I am dead, like I like they like I have no right. The way that they, that they are about to launch into abusing me is really terrible. I hang on. This is this is this is Christmas 2002, this picture right here. And I am at this point separated from my husband. I'm living at a friend's house who's who's actually my oldest friend. And he and his sister are Noah's godparents. I have possibly talked to him for the last time already at this point. But if not, it's really close. Something is said to him that he discards me that fast. And so does his family who I had grown up with and wished would adopt me. And they were like my dream family. I love them dearly. They didn't ask us to leave because they were coming back. Because they asked us to leave and then let my husband move in. So I'm not sure what he said to them. But... And then what was really sad is that my son has no idea who his godparents are. This was somebody, I mean, I could, I could just go into the whole story and tell you what a betrayal that was because I had already felt like I'd seen him through so much and that he knew who I was, you know, it just didn't make any sense to me. None of these reactions had anything to do with me. Obviously, what has to do with me is the fact that I stayed there, the fact that I was vulnerable. The pieces of it that, that are important to pay attention to, 
are when I could heal in myself. And of course, what, what absolutely breaks my heart is that this is what I believe killed my son. This is why he was having such a hard time coping and why he was using drugs and, you know, ultimately why he died. Because in our case, what you had was, I was raised in this narcissistic family, then I married a sociopath and compounded it all because I was living right there in the midst of all these people. What had made it worse is I thought that I knew what I was doing. I thought that I was going, going to be around my family and that extended family had saved the day for me when I was a kid, which was true because I had two narcissistic parents and then I had grandparents and great grandparents. I had all this extended family. And I also had a real stable, like I had neighbors and teachers and stuff that didn't ever change. And I had lifelong friends and, and you know, that I had since childhood. And so I was able to get my emotional needs met elsewhere from not with, not with my parents. So in my mind, I was thinking, I knew my parents weren't perfect, but I thought it was the system that was required. It was a system that was great for kids. So I just need to set my kids up with a system like I had, and then it wouldn't be so critical if I made, you know, if I made a mistake or if I wasn't the perfect mom, there would be slack there. You know, there'd be someone to pick up the where I was weakest. And in my childhood, that had worked pretty well. My parents did do certain things. I mean, they they, they were so they were showed up for awards banquets. I never I never had the appearance at all of a neglected kid, even though I really was one. I really was a neglected kid because really what was seen in front of other people was all there was. There wasn't anything, there wasn't any bonding or connection that wasn't seen in front, seen by other people. The very best there was was what other people saw. This was true also for my sons. The very best that, that there was with their dad was what other people saw. Their dad was, was quite abusive in private and he was quite abusive to me and then he was really very very abusive to them and particularly Noah he had he had the trauma bond with Noah and transferred after we were apart transferred that narcissi narcissistic supply that he got from me onto Noah Noah became his number one top resource for that Liam became just he, invisible Liam was just someone he ignored and so that was the dynamic it was kind of like I always equated it to a cat and a mouse that Noah was like a, a a real mouse, and the cat would play with the mouse till he was dead, and the mouse would react and you know squeak and squeal and run and and try and get away and you know do all that stuff. And Liam was more like a a cat toy, like a toy mouse. So he wasn't as fun and interact. He didn't react as much. He was much more subdued and calmer and didn't react as much. So the cat would ignore the mouse toy unless the mouse wasn't around, unless he couldn't find a real mouse, unless the real, you know, then he would play with the mouse toy. And by play, I mean torture. By play, I mean torture and abuse. But that's what it was like. And, and it was really scary because once we were apart, I could no longer protect them. And when we were together, I never even let, I, I never ever let, left the kids alone with him. I got babysitters even when he was home and and yeah just never really left the kids alone with him I didn't I didn't trust that he would take care of them there were enough um, little experiences where either he was so totally self-absorbed that he really made these errors like things like when my youngest son was a little tiny baby brand new baby he had him on the countertop and he fell off you know things like that would happen and so either he was just unaware because it was self-absorbed self or these were deliberate acts of abuse. With PTSD and complex post-traumatic stress disorder, it, it is commonly traced to childhood, although it doesn't have to be. It just has to be a, cir a cir circumstance set up where you have a prolonged and repeated abuse where there's a power dynamic where you feel you don't have the power and you also feel you can't leave. So it can be a, it can be a job that you feel financially like you just can't afford to leave. You have to stay there. It can be a relationship with like a, a marriage where you feel financially trapped, like you, you can't get out with the kids. Common is that it, it could be those but also trapped to childhood, and because in childhood you really have the feeling that you can't leave, that you need your parent for survival, and this person is a threat to 
your very life and you feel like it truly is life or death you it leaves wounds on you that you're it's inevitable that at some point there's going to be a narcissistic injury and you're going to be end up being on the receiving end of abuse from these people because in theory the narcissists by definition are not going to be good parents because the the very priorities of a narcissist are, are exactly the opposite of what your priorities need to be to be a good parent. By definition, parents are supposed to be able to put somebody else's needs first and they're supposed to be very responsible. Narcissists are very irresponsible. And by responsible, I mean responsible for the things that they do and say. And a narcissist absolutely is not. They blame others for every single thing. And so they're not accountable. They're terrible role models. They lack compassion, they lack empathy, they don't follow through, they don't, they're hypocrites, they're liars. They will expect their children to be everything that they're not, and then they will have this pathological envy of them because they're that. So, like for instance, my mother didn't, it was, was poor, she didn't have a lot of money growing up, and so I felt, and so she couldn't do a lot of the things that I was, I, I had the opportunity to do. And so I did a lot of things just because I did them for both of us because she didn't ever have a chance to do it herself. What I see now is that while I was doing that to, to honor her and to do something for her, she was just getting more and more envious all the time. The ways that they had to see me, the ways they described me, so hurtful because it's not the person that they end up being estranged from is a person who, who is like them who's incapable of love, who's petty, who is competitive, who is the person that justifies all of their negative feelings. And so that's not me. And so to me, it just seems like such a shame that people who have family get 